And so now we will uh, have the two last speakers, which are actually uh, two of the biggest uh, broiler integration in, in the world. We will start with uh, Dr. Payung Sak from uh, CP Thailand to show you what is this uh, perspective uh, on their, their point of view. So, Doctor, please. Swadikap. Mr. Chairman, distinguished participants, it is a great pleasure to stand on here. Very excited. And thank you for your giving the opportunity to me to share explain with you on the topic of success story on the sustainable broiler production. I'm going to talk in Thailand broiler industry and key payer company in Thailand that he has, uh, they have done. So I will divide my talk into three parts. First, we give overall of, overall of the Thailand broiler industry. Secondly, we move to how to practice, and then we talk about uh, paradigm shift in our industry in Thailand. Let's move in the first topic because we have only 20 minutes to manage. <laughs> Let's look at the chart of global broiler chicken producers. Since 2003, 2003 and 2013, USA is number one in producer. The second, China. The third, Brazil. Thailand is in number nine. We produce 1.9 million metric ton. If we look at the exporter, since 2003 due to 2014, Brazil is number one for export, secondly, USA, and third, EU, and the fourth, Thailand. Since 2014, we share 6% for export in terms of global exporter. Let's look at on the continued growth of our history. This is the chart for 40 years. Since 1973, we start export just only 163 metric ton. And we export low frozen chicken. And since 1991, we start to export cooked chicken and continue growth like a baby, go to uh, uh, elder. Till 2003, we export 546 metric ton. That year, 20% that be raw chicken and 30% that be cooked product. Unfortunately, as you know, in 2004, global crisis from bird flu, the bird flu hit Thailand. We cannot export raw chicken. The raw chicken already finished after bird flu crisis. But if we see the cooked product, we continue growth. Since 2013, we export 525,000 metric tons, as you see. This is our history of Thailand. Why we can grow it? Let me explain some for our broiler farming practices. This is a part of sustainable. Five key factors drive on Thailand broiler farming practice. First, vertical integration. Secondly, our feed quality. The third, that is practice on the biophysics, farm management, animal welfare. The fourth, we are playing on the updated technology on the automatic farming and equipment, and some key payer they use on the computer like control through the internet can sit, uh, can control anywhere in the world to chicken house. And the last one that is environment friendly and corporate social responsibility. I will forecast the last my talk. Let me give some example because we don't have time more. Thailand do for the vertical integration. Most of the company do for full vertical integration. That's starting from feed meal, breeding stock. They produce their own feed supply to the breeding stock and they have broader farming, even on the contract farming or company owned farms. They have processing. Some of fresh meat, they uh, supply to the domestic and some to export, and some of meat adding value in terms of crude product to branding and marketing. 
that's for domestic and export under their own brand or under the customer brand. This is the industry structure. For the feed, we not talk much because you are expert here, but the best quality is the best feed stuff. This is just like a simple concept. And also on the food safety in terms of uh, implementation of HACCP, this is very important to do in feed mill too. For farming, our farm in Thailand located in good landscape and as you see this is our farm that located far away from the city earlier and part of the how we use cross house environment control with evaporative cooling because Thailand we are hot and humid and some rainings that's why this type of the how very good for Thai uh, boy industry but some uh, participants used to go to Thailand Say, Dr. Bissak, I don't agree with you. Your, your country is not uh, hot and humid. Your country is hot, hotter, and the hottest. <laughs> that is my country. <laughs> In terms of biosecurity, very important, what is the key, pay, uh, key person to make like a HACCP analysis in terms of the disease? They choose analyzed in terms of list assessment, list analysis of disease in terms of epidemiology. For the practices on the farms, they do for our, in our system. That means repairs on their own chick in the farm. After that, they cash on the farm out and cleaning, big cleaning the farms. Our authority uh, strictly controls us to keep downtime period 14 days before repairs the new batch. Uh, we have to take permission, take permit from the government's authority to replace the new best. Every single fog, we must take the permission first. I like to forget on this one. So that means the dynamic effect of farming activity that is common by us really into the total supply chain. We're not talking about only the farming. We're not talking about only the feed meal. We just see like a a uh, holistic, this is common, but should be concerned. If we're talking about the biosecurity, we see the holistic, that is the biosecurity. If you're talking on only the farm, that is not biosecurity. <coughs> this is our farm layout. We sec uh, separate poultry area and living area. Before entering the far uh, farming uh, poultry area, we have to take a shower, change farm uniform on the vehicle must pass the space too. This is our broiler farm, not only the breeder farm. We implement the same standard, same posture. Breeder and broiler farming practice, same standard. For animal welfare, we adapt on the five freedoms into our process. That means freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from disease, pain and injury, freedom from fear and distress, freedom to express normal behavior, to encourage healthy chicken and current quality of the chicken. Not only the ethic and moral that we, we must uh, concern. This is for example our SOP that we implement. Feed we provide daily. Chicken has access to green water during on the daylight and the stocking density not exceeds 33 kilograms per square meter. And there are period of the diet in every 24 hour period six to eight hours and four hours continuous darkness is actually from three days or seven days on to three days prior to cash. Like our, our human to have the time for sleeping, six to eight hours, and let them be happy chicken, <laughs> more healthy. Yeah. For the poultry health inspection, we have vet in charge to see poultry held in every single farm and also in each uh, community they have poultry welfare officer in charge to inspect on the animal welfare, welfare practices in their farms and to build capacity and quality the key payer community in Thailand they use e uh, they can trace forward and backward 
fast and accuracy. And some company they can trace the product in supermarket. They can trace that chaos back to the farm. The customer can see this package come from which farm, which area. They can see under the code backward to the farm, even on the ingredients. So this is basic principle, best genetic selection with comfortable living, proper nutrition, best access on bioscurity, proper management, well animal welfare. So healthy and fast growth, exactly. No disease uh, effect to the bird if we follow the basic principle. Not only efficiency that we think right now, company thinking the new concept, we call it paradigm shift from the efficiency to the sustainability, and we think from farm to fork. Now, why we should we do product sustainability? Because the, as you know, climate change has huge impact on the agriculture and food security. Also sustainable management by eco efficiency and social efficiency as you see three cycle intersection and produce, produce the product more sustainably with enhanced company competitive advantage and comply with the rule and regulations. So company operate under the concept green farm, green business to ensure efficient resource utilization under four hours. That means reduce, reuse, recycle, replenish to promote sustainable sourcing which, and emphasize on finding key raw materials from source that protect national resources and develop sustainable product with life cycle assessments as we uh, listen this morning. So in terms of CSR toward sustainability, four dimensions to take into account. First, good governance to make transparency, and then risk management and compliance, and society development, food safety, and consumer health, and the last one that means people development. This is the roadmap for paradigm shift our efficiency to the sustainability. If we see the, the last twin, uh, before 1996, or not, uh, last decade, we're thinking only the quality and food safety. But at the moment, we should concern for the environment. We should starting to do for the green product, like uh, eco-efficiency, eco-design, or even on the low carbon energy efficiency or the green logistic, green value chain to be product sustainability. That's it, my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, yeah. Dr. Yun-Sak. Thank you, thank you. We will have the questions yeah. afterwards. Yeah.